When designing sloping footings, especially at the face of the column, it is important to understand that the cross section at critical locations isn't rectangular. Instead, the top surface slopes linearly towards the edges, forming a trapezoidal profile. This geometry complicates the calculation of bending stress because it depends on the moment of inertia of a non-rectangular section. To simplify the design process, engineers often refer to two practical methods found in the literature. First, equivalent width method and second, top width method. In the equivalent width method, we simplify the analysis by replacing the trapezoidal section of the footing with an equivalent rectangular section. This new section has a width denoted as BE, produces the same moment of inertia as the original trapezoid. To calculate this equivalent width BE, we use the dimensions of both the footing and the column, specifically those parallel to the section line as shown in equation and figure. Once the width is determined, we calculate the effective depth using the guidelines provided in Clause G1.1 of the IS456 code. In the top width method, we calculate the effective depth of the footing by considering the top width of its trapezoidal section, specifically the portion parallel to the section line. Now, this top width depends on whether there is a column offset. If there is no offset, the top width is simply equal to the column width. But if the column is offset by a distance b dash, the top width becomes the column width plus twice the offset, accounting for the extended spread of a load. This method is considered conservative, but that's actually a design advantages. It typically results in a larger effective depth d, which leads to an under-reinforced section, a safer and more ductile structural choice.